Let's now invite Sarah Rugheimer, an astrophysicist with York University. Sarah, good afternoon and thanks for your time. While all of thanks this sounds me. extremely exciting and mystical, can you sort of help us break down so I have so many questions? Firstly, what have we found? What is the strongest evidence? So I would walk back a little even from that. Okay. Uh, first, we need to confirm that it is indeed dimethyl sulfide in the atmosphere. That'll take some time to do. Uh, with any of these detections of a molecule that's light years away in a planet, there's a lot of assumptions that go in there. So first, we'll need to replicate that it is indeed dimethyl sulfide. Okay, so what is dimethyl sulfide in the first place for those who are watching? Why is it so important? What is this? Yeah, dimethyl sulfide is a gas that's produced by microbial life on Earth. And so the thought is, if we're seeing it in this high abundance on an, another planet, maybe it is microbes on that planet producing the gas. Uh, but there's a couple things that we first need to confirm. One is, is it dimethyl sulfide? And then two, what are other ways to get this gas? Especially since this planet is very different from Earth. It has a very thick hydrogen helium envelope on it. Doesn't really look like what the artist rendition is here. Um, so we need to look at all the other ways to produce this gas as well. I'm so glad you're talking about the planet because I wanted to know more about this particular planet. W what do we know of this and the fact that it's so far, far away that I don't think in human lifetime anybody can actually go there? Is that true? Absolutely. So any exoplanet is just too far for us to actually send something to. Um, this planet is uh, bigger than Earth. It has maybe liquid water ocean with a thick hydrogen helium atmosphere. So it's very different than Earth. It's, it's not just like a second Earth, so to speak. It's a quite different environment. And so that's another reason why we need to be cautious. Um, and then I'd finally say it's around a very different star. It's around one of these cool M dwarf stars that have a very different sort of radiation environment than our sun. So we also need to look at how that plays a role in this uh, atmosphere. So I want to ask you what next in terms of this investigation, because some of course are saying this is the strongest evidence. You'd like to walk back in your understanding of what we have found so far. So what happens next to conclude what we have found? So, of course, with any sort of big claim, there'll be a number of scientific teams which will try to replicate the finding, see if uh, with their pipeline they actually confirm the detection of dimethyl sulfide. This was given at only a three sigma level, which is sort of the weakest uh, detection significance, and it is quite model dependent seemingly. So we need to first do a little more legwork in confirming the detection. And then also there is interesting lab work that's been done um, even last year in 2024 on how how to produce dimethyl sulfide without life. Uh, and we also found dimethyl sulfide on a comet. So I think more work will be done to try to tease out, is this the robust biosignature that we think it is? Right. Or are there just different environments that could produce the gas? Okay, last question about James Webb Telescope. Do you believe that it will be able to detect more of what has been found at the moment? I'm basically talking about the capability of this telescope. Yeah, so what I love about this moment in history is we are, for the first time, able to maybe find signs of life in another planet, mm. and that's with the James Webb Space Telescope. But because it's the first time in human history, uh, it's also at the edge of what James Webb can do. So it will require probably more follow-up observations, and ultimately we'll need bigger telescopes to really look for a lot of biosignatures around many more planets. This is just kind of at the edge of what James Webb is capable of by pushing it to its extremes. Wow. Okay, so much to unpack there. Sarah Rugheimer, an astrophysicist with York University. Appreciate your time and your expertise. Sarah, thank you for joining us this afternoon.